Hello, it's Gary Fox here, and uh, we're going to talk about three-phase electricity today, uh, but we're going to work our way into it. Three-phase electricity was brought to us by uh, Tesla. Uh, his uh, multi-phase, or polyphase is the term that was used, motors kind of rough revolutionized the, uh, the whole industry. Uh, it took a little time for that to happen. Um, <laughs> he had to fight the powerhouse at, at the time. His name was Edison. And uh, Edison was stuck on DC. Uh, I'll see if I can find some links to put at the bottom of this video about something that was kind of a little funny part of history called the current wars. It wasn't funny and wow, what all that was done. But uh, a little different part of history. Anyhow start out we will have uh, I'm going to draw it just as a bar magnet and it is uh, attached to a shaft so it can spin and as that bar magnet spins it cuts across some coils up here okay and what that will do it will create our sine wave the same thing that I talked about in the past video and as the North Pole passes this one up here it creates a positive voltage as it spins on around and the North Pole crosses the bottom one, the voltage starts going negative. As it's at 90 or at the 90 degrees in relationship to the poles, it uh, doesn't cut any fields, and so the voltage is at zero. Well, the problem with that is, let's say this is tied to a shaft and it's tied to some kind of thing to crank this. The problem is that the amount of power to move that magnet is going to be high at each one of these pulses whether it's positive or negative so every time that it goes by the pole it requires a whole lot more power and then it's relatively easy to move while it's right here at the uh, zero position so that kind of created a problem so the idea was well maybe if we add more poles we could uh, have have a uh, smoother operation and by the way if this was a motor instead of a pole everything would be hunky-dory while the voltage coming in was negative it would attract this or positive it would attract this north pole up here in this direction and then once it got to the positive if this north pole was stuck here it wouldn't have any reason at all to try it it wouldn't be happy it'd be wanting to be repelled but which way would it go would it go this direction whoops or would it go this direction in other words it was the same old problem of the top dead center problem the same thing that caused problems in locomotives so the answer in locomotives was uh, that we would go ahead and put a uh, cylinder with it at 90 degrees in relationship to the uh, first cylinder so they have one cylinder on one side of the locomotive pushing the wheels at one phase and then 90 degrees they would have the other uh, the other cylinder so we will try to do that with our coil right here we'll create ourselves a uh, second set of poles and as you can see when it's crossing right where it's at right now it would be at max and then it would go down. If we made it 180 degrees opposite, it would be the same thing. It would just be that yellow leads green. Right now, green leads yellow. But it would still be 90 degrees apart. And that's what these white lines represent, or 90 degrees. The difference between the last video is that I drew two phases. We're going to, or two cycles. We're going to need to see two cycles. So that would be the first step. Well, what really happens now on the amount of power? So the best way to do that is that I have a different program here where I've already plotted it. So we're going to try to shrink this. So what I've got here, I've got the two phases. And then I add the two together to find out how much power it's going to take. And it's even worse. We still have the two pulses per revolution but now they're even more than they were before so we didn't help ourselves in that situation not at all 
What we did do, though, is that if this, this thing stops right on a pole, uh, it's going to know which direction to go if it's a motor instead of a generator. So we did help ourselves in that because we always know which one's leading the other one. So it does have one advantage, but it still doesn't get the job done. So let's go. If two don't work, let's try three. And that's what Tesla did. I need to turn off a bunch of stuff here. Okay, I've changed these now to 120. Let's turn off the uh, that coil. And now we're going to turn on some coils separated by 60 degrees, or actually 120 degrees, uh, one third of the way around a, a uh, circle is 120 degrees. So now we have this waveform right here. Well, it turns out that does some really nice stuff. Uh, if we go back to the uh, graph and we look at what happens after we add these two, these three phases together, and I have to operate this thing. Sorry. We shrink this, and we'll now go to a different graph on this thing. And now we have our three phases, and look what happens when I, it, it, it doesn't, it looks exactly like the, the plot I did with CAD. But a really interesting thing happens here. If I add eight phase A, phase B, and phase C, I end up with a line that's right on zero. In other words, it doesn't have an increase and decrease in the amount of pull. It's always constant. And that's the nice thing about three phase. It's perfectly balanced. And uh, that's why the three phase symbol is often used in a lot of a lot of things. And at least that's my opinion. So we'll go look at some of these things where three phase is used. So we'll shrink this. We'll go back to the uh, CAD program, but what I'm going to do is go to a little different drawing that I've created. So we shrink that one, and we pull up this one. Okay, here is, I'm showing three propeller shafts, three, three blades on a propeller is one way of looking at it. But it's a way of drawing it, they're each 180 degrees apart. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to shift it. And I shifted it as kind of a random amount. I think it was 17.25 degrees. Where did I come up with that? I don't know. It sounded like a good random number to me. And as I shift that, let's measure how much is above the center and how much is below the center. And let's measure how much is to the left and how much is to the right. So I take those three dimensions, six dimensions, and I uh, just basically took dimensions of what it was and then I added those together so as I add the amount above I've got a uh, 0.2965 and a plus 6788 and I subtract that from this one that's going downward which is 0.97 subtract it from those 0.9753 and it comes out to be zero in other words, as much as down as is above. If I go with uh, the same thing left and right, so I add, use this as my positive number, 0.955, and I add, uh, subtract 0.7343 and 0.2207, I end up with zero. In other words, as much as that to the left as there is to the right. So that is a really, really, really useful thing. Let me go to a, a picture here. We'll zoom this out a little bit. If I remember how to do it. Here we go. And we'll make it bigger. So that's what made it bigger. There we go. This is what's called a B-24 bomber. It was used in World War II. It was used in all of the theaters of operation. And if you notice, 
these propellers here, each one has three blades. So they actually use that property right there where as much as above is below. And it made these things perfectly balanced. Each of these engines would be operating at different speeds. So if a couple engines got to the uh, same, somehow they got synchronized, which would happen sometimes, uh, it would still not matter. The airplane would still be all balanced and everything would be uh, hunky-dory. So you can see that this thing was used uh, was used for other purposes. There's also an engine. It's used in 911 Porsches and uh, also in uh, Honda Gold Wings and Honda Valkyries. And it's what's called a, a Pancake 6. It's got six cylinders and they're all laying flat opposed to each other. And it's the most perfect balanced engine you can get. Uh, the uh, cylinders, three of them are firing per revolution. So you have your basically like three phase and they're 120 degrees apart. But then it's also balanced from front to back. It's balanced the amount of weight going sideways as it's going around the cylinder, as it's going around the crankshaft is also balanced and it's balanced from front to back and the uh, torsion is balanced on the uh, on the crankshaft it was used as I said on it's used on Hondas and Porsche 911s and Honda motorcycles the big ones it was also used on the uh, Tucker automobile which was designed in 1948 and uh, didn't last very long and it's rumored that basically the big three auto auto uh, companies had it killed by using political power so uh, it's got a long history another place where these symbols are used let's go back to these right here As you can see this symbol right in here uh, which is another way of connecting those three phases together it's, this is called Y and usually in electrical it's turned upside down like this Y right here. Uh, let's see if we can. Yeah, it's turned like this right here in most electrical symbols, so it looks like the letter Y. And this is called delta because it forms the triangle, which looks like the Greek delta. Um, this symbol here, if you turn it upside down, what do you have? You have the peace sign. Uh, so we use these signs quite a bit. Uh, it also looks like a, a Mercedes emblem. Uh, and then this one right in here, the Delta, uh, the YMCA had that upside down, stood for Mind, Body, Spirit. It was one of their old logos. It's also used uh, to mean, uh, I can represent, well, I don't know if I'm going to say that, but anyhow, the all-seeing eye that's on the back of the dollar bill also uses this right around it. That's the triangle that's around the all-seeing eye. Uh, so, it's used many ways. That also looks like the uh, civil defense uh, sign that's used uh, to tell you where a fallout shelter was back in the old days. So anyhow, that's three phase. It's perfectly balanced. Uh, mind, body, spirit. That's what we all need to be trying to get balanced. And uh, it's useful uh, if you look at electrical wires and you look at those high tension towers. And now you'll know why there's three different wires hanging on those. Uh, and it's also used in industry very much. It's how that they have all their motors are a little bit more efficient because they're perfectly balanced. There's no jerking around on them. Uh, anyhow, I think that's pretty much it as far as three phase. Uh, I will try to put a link on here about uh, some videos about Tesla and the current wars. It's a pretty interesting thing. Uh, if you've been following my blog, you know that with uh, transformers allow you to transform voltages up and down and that means that they're able to have high voltage 
to take a transmit from the power plants over to where the loads are and then they transform the voltage back down to a level that people can handle. In other words, I don't think I want 69 kilovolts in my house, but 120 volts is okay. Uh, so they can transfer the voltage at high voltage to get it at a far distance and that way they're not using a large amount of current and having a lot of resistance losses. Edison couldn't do that with DC and so Tesla had a much better product by coming up with uh, AC. So uh, Edison tried to sell that it was unsafe. I will see if I can find those videos for you. It's a pretty funny story. Appreciate you listening. This is Gary Fox. Uh, you have a good one.